Don't screw this up, Matt Pat. Gordon Ramsay is watching you, judging your every move. All right, let's try to think about this logically. In what order should a burger's ingredients be stacked? If the lettuce is on the bottom, it'll catch the juices and keep the bottom bun from getting soggy, right? Ah, but if the lettuce is on the bottom, it could block the flavors above it from reaching the taste buds. Should I spread sauces on top of the bottom bun or under the top bun or both? A and the cheese, it, it goes on top of the patty, right? <laughs> of course it does. What are you, some kind of under patty sociopath? Although, maybe that's what Gordon Ramsay wants us to be. Okay, focus up. Where do the onions go? Time to make a decision, Matt Pat. Time to... Oh, nice. He died of boredom during my interior monologue. Ah. Oh, man, it got cold. Internet, welcome to Food Theory, the show that strives to be well done, unlike your burger. Theorists, last summer, Food Theory went to great lengths to determine whether gas grills or charcoal grills were superior. This year, we have a new challenger entering the ring, Traeger, our sponsor for this video, who saw that episode and shipped out one of their Ironwood 885 wood pellet grills to me out of the blue, basically telling me that if I'm serious about reaching my final dad pat form, I'm gonna need to up my grill game. And I gotta say, they nailed my personality in a grill exactly. It's a Wi-Fi enabled grill that I can control with my phone. With my phone people! Just boop! And it's set at the right temperature. It is science and tech and food and I kinda love it. They also call the Wi-Fi technology Wi-Fi technology. Even their dad jokes are on par with mine. Also, can I just mention how the packaging turns into a cardboard playhouse? It's brilliant because so much of my life at this point is cardboard waste, so well done Traeger thinking about us family men. The grill is slowly emerging, but more importantly, Ollie's new playhouse, house, is being unboxed. Oh, this is so cute! Ollie is definitely gonna love this, and uh, I gotta admit, I'm a little bit jealous that he gets to play inside this thing. Anyway, because this is a brand deal and I wanted an excuse to try this puppy out, today we've concocted an episode that's got me on an all-day grill-a-thon, cooking up the summer staple, hamburgers. But today is all about what happens when those patties leave the grill. Food Theory is a channel all about optimizing your food experience, even the finer nuances that don't always get a lot of consideration, which is why today we're tackling proper burger stack order. Now look, I get it. The order in which your burger ingredients are stacked might seem nitpicky and pedantic, but there are real reasons why this matters, people. Nobody likes their burger falling apart before it gets to their mouth, and stack order plays a huge role in that. I cannot tell you the number of delicious burgers that have been ruined for me because the sauces and the lettuce mix together to create, like, a slip and slide for the patty and it whoop out of the bun. Plus, there's the whole matter of how stack order affects the bite experience itself. Two burgers with identical ingredients ingredients but different stack orders can result in two different experiences. Bun sogginess, lettuce crispness, heck, certain flavors could even become more pronounced depending on the location in the stack. The way I see it is that there are two types of people out there in the world. Those who worry about the order in which their burger ingredients are stacked and those who don't. If you're part of the latter group, don't fret because it turns out there are plenty of people out here worrying about this on your behalf. We got proof of this a few years back when a Twitter user by the name of Thomas Bechtel made this astute observation, quote, I think we need to have a discussion about how Google's burger emoji is placing the cheese underneath the burger while Apple puts it on top. And, uh, well, that conversation definitely happened. Bakedal's tweet blew up, articles were written, and basically the entire internet weighed in on how awful Google's burger emoji stack order was. And it worked. Google corrected their burger emoji in the very next Android update. Plus, all the other burger emojis wound up getting dragged into the conversation, allowing the nitty-gritty subtleties of burger order stack to be discussed out in the open. Bakedal's thread attracted an array of opinions, such as as lettuce on the bottom is an abomination. Lettuce protects bun from becoming soggy with meat juice. The hot meat makes the lettuce wilt. You need the tomato as a buffer from the heat. The Samsung one is even worse. Lettuce between the burger and the cheese. It's from top to bottom. Lettuce, cheese, tomato, onions, burger. Bottom to top should be lettuce, tomato, burger, cheese, any other way is sacrilege. Suffice it to say, the internet did not reach consensus that day. People basically agreed that the patty should go between the buns and that was it. So obviously Obviously, the world needs a definitive answer to this hamburger humdinger. That is why today, Food Theory is gonna determine precisely what the optimal stack order is once and for all. Now, before we can test different burger stack orders, we're gonna need to agree on a standard set of ingredients. This is easier said than done because there's really no one with final say on the subject. Get it together, hamburgers! The National Hot Dog and Sausage Council over there rules over all wiener-related 
things with an iron fist. Someone from your camp needs to step it up. And no, it is not gonna be this guy. Granted, a great number of foodies and chefs have strong opinions on what should and should not go on a hamburger. But even they can agree on something as simple as whether ketchup should go on a burger or not, let alone any of the other ingredients. But weirdly enough, there is a lot of ingredient agreement across the various burger emojis. I mean, just look at them all side by side. They all basically have the same stuff in different orders. Buns, patty, cheese, lettuce, tomato. And I see you WhatsApp going into more detail than the others. You've added ketchup and possibly onion underneath it. Honestly, I'm cool with all of these ingredients. They all feel like solid examples of what you'd find on a typical burger, especially here in the US. But I also want to toss two other classic ingredients into the mix for the sake of today's experiment. Pickles and mayo, which will add some height and some slipperiness to the burgers to help separate the burger stability men from the burger stability boys. All right, so now on to the fun stuff. Let's select which stack order is best. The first one we're gonna call the Whopper with Cheese Stack. This one's pretty straightforward. If you order a Whopper with Cheese at Burger King, you get a burger with the exact same ingredients that we're stacking today. From bottom to top, the Whopper with Cheese is stacked like so. Bottom bun, patty, cheese, pickles, ketchup, onion, tomato, lettuce, mayo, top bun. Also, this happens to be a very popular stack order amongst the burger emojis. Facebook, Messenger, and Microsoft all stack their emojis with the patty on the bottom, with cheese, tomatoes, and lettuce above. And after Google got shamed into changing their burger emoji, they went with this stack order as well. Considering how many emojis and world-famous hamburgers are patterned after the stack order, it definitely feels like the Whopper with cheese is like the number one seed in this competition with a great shot at winning. The next stack order we're gonna test is a little something I like to call the WhatsApp Ramsey. Gordon Ramsey did not give us permission to use his name for this burger, but deep down I kind of hope it makes him angry enough to call me a donkey to my face, thereby fulfilling the last item on my bucket list. Our thinking with this one is that the stack order of WhatsApp's burger emoji and Ramsey's quote perfect burger are actually pretty similar, with the lettuce leaf on the bottom, a tomato on top of that, then the patty, then the cheese and onion on top. Now, there are obviously some differences between the two burgers. For example, Ramsey grills his onions, whereas our test burgers are gonna use raw sliced onions. Also, Ramsey's burger doesn't use ketchup, whereas the WhatsApp burger emoji does. Ramsey does place a lot of importance on using sauce to glue the burger together at multiple levels, however. How many times have you seen guests that have opened up a burger and they try to put ketchup or mayonnaise? Once you've assembled a burger, you can't re break it down. You gotta put it together and eat it nice and whole. So we're gonna borrow that tactic with our sauces, mayo and ketchup. In the end, our WhatsApp Ramsey burger goes bottom bun, mayo, lettuce, tomato, then another touch of mayo. A touch. Just a touch. Followed by the patty with the cheese melted on it. On top of that, we'll put pickles, onions, then the top bun with ketchup applied to the underside for gluing purposes. One last note, Gordon Ramsay finds pickles too acidic for his perfect burger, but again, we're more concerned about the integrity of our experiment today. Our next burger is a fun one. I'm calling it the Krabby Samsung Stack. See, if you look at the Samsung emoji, they do something weird. They put a piece of lettuce between the meat and the cheese, but here's the thing, they're not alone. There's another sandwich that you might be familiar with that's stacked in the exact same way, the double Krabby Patty with the works. I can't put a patty on a bun with lettuce, cheese, onions, tomatoes, ketchup, mustard, pickles, and top bun together in that order. Now, I'm not gonna try to apply a whole lot of logic to this. SpongeBob calls it a double, but there's still only one patty. Instead, I'm just gonna swap the mustard out for mayo and call it a day. The Krabby Samsung starts with a bottom bun, then a patty, lettuce, cheese, onions, tomato, ketchup, mayo, pickles, and top bun. Finally, I wanna make sure that we pit the Apple burger emoji head to head against the original Google burger emoji. The off chance that Google was right all along and actually created created the best burger stack of it all. So with this in mind, I came up with the Apple Hat Stack and the Google Hat Stack. Basically, both of these burger stacks begin with the ingredients exactly as presented in their respective emojis, but wearing a hat made out of the other necessary ingredients. So the Apple Hat Stack begins with the bottom bun, then lettuce, patty, cheese, and tomato, exactly as the emoji shows. But then it gets its hat of ketchup, pickle, onion, mayo, top bun. Same story with the Google Hat Stack. We start with the emoji exactly as presented, bottom bun, cheese, patty, tomato, lettuce, and then it receives the exact same hat setup. Ketchup, pickle, onion, mayo, top bun. So, you excited to put these burgers to the test? Probably not as excited as Steph and I are because we actually get to eat them. We'll be judging the burgers in two categories. For lack of a better term, we'll call the first category taste. Granted, all the burgers should taste nearly identical given the fact that they'll be grilled the same way and constructed with identical ingredients, but the taste category is gonna take everything the mouth senses into consideration. Taste, texture, temperature on the tongue. Basically, it'll consider the whole symphony of senses going on in your mouth. Steph and I will give each burger a score of 1 to 10 for taste, with 10 being the best. The second category will be structural in 
integrity. Nobody likes a burger that falls apart easily, and stack order is important. A burger may earn up to five points in the table wiggle portion of the test, and it can earn an additional five points during the actual eating phase of the test. So with all those rules outlined and our contestants lined up, it's time for that sweet, sweet Dad Pat grilling montage. What do you think, Steph? Do I do I look? Do I look good? You look like such a grill master right now. Yeah. Give me like a give me like sort of a hardcore look. The grill dance. Grill dance. So good. Oh, it so good. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I can't. I'm attached to my microphone. Yeah, me too. One of these days we'll get know, wireless like, microphones. Today is not that day. We eventually made it back into the house where we began assembling our five test burgers. First up was the Whopper with cheese stack. Okay, ready? And squish. So that's one. Show it off to the camera, Steph. Ooh. Oh, it is a beautiful burger. It is really, really nice. It, I mean, it looks visually really it looks good. It looks great. But the combination of onion, ketchup, lettuce, and pickle, I think that's gonna create a little slip and slide for the burger. I love a Whopper though. Let's set that one aside, because next up, what's up, Ramsey? It looks also good. I'm just hungry. It is the same combination of ingredients. They all are. Here we go. This is the Krabby Patty Samsung. The Krabby Samsung. This is the SpongeBob approved method. <laughs> Oh, oh no. It was a good SpongeBob, right? Matt? No! <laughs> and then finally, pickles and bun. What? Right? It's it's a slippery, sloppy mess up top. Slippery, Ooh, sloppy. Oh, it's so wet. Ew, so wet. All right, there you go. Huh. Krabby Patty. Double that's Krabby with what, cheese. That's not what I expected. Double Krabby Patty with cheese. <laughs> Last two. Google hat. This is the original Google emoji. The problem that everyone has with this one is that the cheese is on the bottom bun, which seems odd it's to a lot of people. It's closer to your tongue, actually, which I kind of appreciate because sometimes cheese gets lost in the burger. That's what I was thinking. I think this one might actually have a substantially different flavor than the other ones because the cheese is hitting your taste buds first. Some of these are getting kind of precariously stacked. Like these are very, these are very hot. Krabby Samsung has already fallen oh, over, no. and I don't know oh, why. Come on, Krabby Samsung. Look at this. It's already fallen. This Lastly. Apple hat. Onion. Okay, onion. One, two, and three. Then mayo on the top bun. 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 Mayo on the mayo on the mayo on the top bun. Mayo on the mayo on the mayo on the Oh no, that's just, we can't, no, this is, this is just too white. I just can't. Mayo on the top bun. Oh God. Mayo, maybe, do you think this is why some people on the internet call me a lol cow? As in one who they can milk for the lols. Oh, 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 that's so accurate. I hadn't even heard that. I'm a lol cow. Okay, here's the last burger, you guys. Apple burger. This is this channel is a lol cow, I feel like. Oh. This whole channel. Our udders are full. Milk us. <laughs> I'm just, I'm leaving. <laughs> My microphone doesn't stretch far enough for me to actually leave the frame any other way. Okay. <laughs> May you on the top bun. <laughs> I hate everything right now. All right, and with that, our, our setup is complete. Time to eat. Not quite. First, Steph and I put each burger through some quick table wiggle trials. This highly scientific test was in no way subjective and gave us insight as to how our five test burgers hold up once they're plated and headed to your table. The Google hat stack and the Apple hat stack perform the best here. Each score in five out of five. The Krabby Samsung, eh, not so much. But then at long last, it was time to test these delicious wood pellet grilled burgers with our mouths. So you got five stability points. Okay. 10 taste points for a whopping total. 15. 15 possible. Let's do this, starting with the Whopper with cheese. Ugh. Here we go. Okay, good, this is just the onion flopping it's all over. Onion. That's not, that's, that's okay, that's here we go. not anybody's fault. So, I'm not getting any cheese at all in this, and I think it's because the burger 
is blocking the cheese. Like the cheese is right in the middle. It's completely sandwiched. You never actually get the cheese. I totally agree. Right? No, I'm getting a lot of the acidity of the top ingredients, the onion, the pickle, and I'm getting the meat of the burger, but I'm not getting any cheese or any of those central ingredients out of this one, yep. which is really interesting. This is very onion forward, and you get onion, you get pickle, and you get meat in this one, which are good, but you completely miss out on the cheese, and I don't really taste a lot of mayo or anything like that either. We gave the Whopper with cheese stack a 7 out of 10 for taste and a 4 out of 5 for how well it stayed together while being eaten. Added to its 4 out of 5 in the table wiggle test, the Whopper with cheese stack scored 15 out of a possible 20. All right, round two. Round two. Got ourselves the Ramsey burger. Oh, oh, that was a juicy sound. Wow. I am shocked by how different it tastes. The bottom of the burger hits your tongue first. It really does. Mm -hmm. And so here, because this one has the lettuce on the bottom, as well as the mayo and the uh, tomato, especially the tomato, yeah. I'm getting a lot of tomato and it's covering up the burger, actually, which is wacky. Yeah. And it feels like I'm eating a tomato sandwich rather than a hamburger. It is so weird, you guys. Try putting the tomato on the bottom it's of wild. your burger, which no one ever does. You never put a tomato on the bottom of your uh, burger. Excuse me, Gordon Ramsay. But except for Gordon Ramsay. Fine, fine, Gordon. I see your point. It is a really tasty burger, but it is not what I would think of when I want to bite into a burger. The WhatsApp Ramsey stack earned seven out of 10 for its extremely different but equally good taste and a one out of five for staying together while being eaten. The wet tomato, lettuce, and mayo down at the bottom wound up turning the bottom bun into a muddy paste. With three table wiggle points, the WhatsApp Ramsey earned 11 out of 20. Round number three, Krabby Samsung. This, this is, is a huge burger So also. while Stephanie takes a bite, I gotta say, some food theory episodes, I'm like, oh yeah, we're gonna find something really interesting. This one, I'm like, I'm curious, but I also don't think we're gonna result in any sort of weird difference, right? There are five burgers, all with the same ingredients. Maybe one will be soggier than the other or whatever, but like ultimately, how big of a difference is burger stack order gonna result? Honestly, I'm shocked. Just from these first two alone, it was literally like trying two different sandwiches because one had, yes, yes, it was totally different again. Are you kidding me, really? Again. Biting into it, I was taken through the order of what I would expect a burger to taste like. I also, this is the only one where I got any hint of cheese, 100%. by the way. Yes, I got the cheese on so this one. The, putting the cheese, you guys, away from the burger actually gives you more cheese taste. It's not, it's not a joke. Like For as skeptical as I was about like who puts the cheese on the lettuce, it's actually really brilliant. It made a big difference. A huge difference. From a flavor standpoint, I'm gonna give this a nine. The structure but, of this one sucks, so like put a toothpick in this puppy before you go and eat it, but you know, it's good. The Krabby Samsung stack earned big points for taste, but low scores in both of the structural integrity categories for a grand total of 14 points. Then it was on to the Google Hat stack. Hmm. That's weird. That's real weird. Are you getting a lot of bread? Yeah. Sorry. Do we need another bite? Here, I'm yeah, gonna try, try another, another bite. bite. It's real strange. I don't understand. I don't get it. Because I, I exactly agree with Steph. I bite this burger and I literally get none of the ingredients. I know there's other stuff in my mouth other than bread and meat, but that's all I taste. Why is that? I'm getting like, at best, like a little pickle. So maybe it was appropriate for the internet to cancel this one out of existence because it practically canceled itself out of existence, <laughs> right? to be honest. We wound up giving the Google hat just three and a half points for taste, but it scored a halfway respectable 12 and a half overall thanks to being a pretty structurally sound burger. Okay. Last one, That's apple, an hat. apple hat. Want me go to start for this it. One? Yeah, okay. go for it. Here we go. Okay, so the, the shtick with this one was Solid. kind of, it was, it was there was no shtick. This is basically the way that you would do this if it came off of a grill, to be honest. It's more flavorful than the Google one, but not as flavorful as any of the others. I totally agree. This one feels sweeter for some reason. Yeah. I'm not sure if the onion is coming mm -hmm. through a little bit more. Right. I think we're very equivalent with how much onion we put on all of these. And I've been really trying, the reason these bites have been so big is that I've been trying to, to get all of them. everything in one bite. I don't taste the cheese at all. <gasps> Again, I don't, what is, and we got sharp, this is sharp cheddar cheeses. This should stand out as about, about as much as you would expect from any normal barbecue like burger in your backyard. And I don't taste it in any of them. Mm -hmm. I don't Krabby, get it. Krabby Samsung was the only one I got it. Yeah. 
Are we gonna tally up the points and see what won? Yeah, so uh, Matt behind the scenes tallied up the points and apparently we have a two-way tie for first place, which is the Whopper with cheese and the apple hat stack. Now, I think that should come with some caveats, friends. I agree. So structurally, apple hat did very well. Whopper performed, I think, sort of upper middle range across the board in all of them. And that's what landed these two at the top. If you're going from a flavor perspective, though, we had a pretty clear winner. Yeah, the Krabby Patty formula in real life actually works. It produced what in both of our palates yeah. was the signature flavor of a burger where you're getting all those ingredients clearly delineated out. So there you have it friends. What seems like a minor point of optimization in your day-to-day -day life can actually yield a pretty substantial difference on your plate. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. Special thanks to Traeger, the sponsor for today's episode. Sure, it does burgers, but this is a serious grill that is way more versatile than that. We've only had it for a few weeks, and already I've used it for roasting veggies, salmon, steaks. Steph, for years, has been wanting to test out grilling our Thanksgiving turkey, and now we finally have the perfect grill to do it on. If it goes well, that should probably give me enough dad points to achieve my final form. Honestly, though, I cannot say enough about this grill. Not only does the wood-fired food actually taste better in my opinion, but it takes the biggest frustration that I have with grilling, lack of temperature control, and it removes it entirely thanks to the settings and phone app. I can get my grill to whatever temperature I need effortlessly and with a ton of precision. And I know I mentioned this earlier, but it had the best unboxing experience I've ever had. This is, a this is so smart. I love this so much. It's so cute. It's such a, like, it's such a smart way to reuse this box too. So while you're assembling your grill, they left a hole for you to place your beverage, your, your chilled beverage, so that while you're putting your grill together, you can have a refreshing brewski. Can we just start a grill unboxing channel, Stephanie? It is a premium product that feels really special and so far has seriously delivered on the results. So check out Traeger's wood pellet grills at TraegerGrills.com as well as their YouTube channel for recipes and tips. And always remember that it's all just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit.